I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape is always adding new features for us, and we're always trying to improve our skills. I want to show you how you can make geometric line art like this. It's very easy to do. It's actually a new method compared to the last time we did this type of art. Before, you had to do tiled clones and make adjustments to shift, scale, rotation. Pretty complicated. Now it's super easy thanks to the new live path effects tiling feature. I'll show you how it works right now. For starters, let's all get on the same page literally. This is the page area. Go to File, Document Properties, and for the format, we'll be on A4. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. This will just keep us all at the same scale if you want to follow along. And since these type of designs look really good against a black background on page, if you click here, you can change the page background color to black. And I'll show you how easy it is. Let's go to the Create Stars and Polygons tool. On the menu, the default will be on Stars. Click over to Polygons. Since we want a hexagon, we'll change the corners to six. Now I can click and drag open my shape. Also, if you hold Control, it'll help you lock in different increments so it's easier to make it straight up and down. Now I've got a black stroke with no fill. If you need to change yours, you can go to Object, Fill and Stroke. On the Fill tab, we want it to be blank today, so have the fill on X, no paint. And for Stroke, let's actually do a white stroke for right now. Before I bring it onto the page, let me show you the absolute basics on how the path effects tiling works. First, we have to make sure we have something selected like this object, then you can go to Path, path effects you'll see a sidebar menu come up but it's empty down here on the plus that's add a path effect now you have your live path effect selector we want to find tiling usually it's on the bottom click on tiling and it still looks like there's a lot of stuff here but it's a lot easier than before it's more visual less punching and calculations for mirroring mode today stay on the very first one right here and you can see the default is rows three, columns three. So here's my original. The trick to this type of design is to change it to one row and we'll start with 25 columns. Here's our one row and there's 25 of these going across. A lot of the math in the old way was to try to get them to line up and stack on top of each other. Now it's super easy. Go up here to edit paths by node and you'll see these two nodes right here. We can now just visually drag them all on top of each other. You can get them pretty close, but then you should zoom in. Also to help, you can enable snapping, this magnet with lightning inside of it. If you toggle that on, now when you drag the pieces together, it goes right on top, right like that. I'll go up here to zoom to fit page, bring it onto the page, and let's continue. We'll start with scale right here. Because we have one row with 25 columns, we want to be on this icon. So we're going to say, starting from the first one, let's reduce the scale every time. By how much? Let's reduce it negative 3% every single time. Enter. You see how it worked? So it has the original and 25 iterations getting smaller and smaller. Let's actually change the stroke width. One might be too big. Let's go to 0.5 millimeters. Back to path effects. Now for the rotate. This is where it kind of makes that twist. First, you have to go to the second option. So each one of our 25 rotates a little bit each time. And let's try three degrees. Enter. <laughs> right there. In no time, once you know how to use this menu, you can make something pretty cool like that instantly. Hit plus minus and you can keep changing the amount. Look at that. That's like a James Bond intro graphic. Seven, eight. You can also go back up to scale. Maybe change that. That's at negative two. Stay on negative three. Let's say you don't like how the center one ends on this angle. You want to change the way that looks. You can add more columns or you can take them away. Let's do another one. Delete. Ready for the main event? Back to polygons and stars. We want to be on polygon six. That's going to be our hexagon, but I want to warp it inward. So for rounded, we'll do 1.0. Enter. You can see it bent it in a bit with the point. For fill and stroke, let's go pretty thin, 0.35 millimeters. For stroke paint, I want to add the gradient. So I'm on the stroke paint tab. Click over to linear gradient. And the default you'll see goes from full color, whatever color you had, to full transparency. If you want this to have opacity, click on it. So now you can see on A for alpha, you're on full transparency. Slide that over to full opacity, and we'll make that red, like a deep red. Maybe bring your yellow over as well. I want the predominant color to be yellow. On the actual hexagon, I can see I'm just past the halfway point. And now we can spin it back to the path effects tab. 
add the path effect, which one? Tiling. We'll do one row. Start with 25, why not? Edit paths by node. It's going to let us stack them. It's hard to do it without zooming. When I was practicing this, I kept forgetting you got to push the second tab for scale and rotate or nothing happens. Why don't we do a negative two scale? There's a lot of them. And for rotate, we'll try three. There you go. <laughs> uh, no, we'll do four, make it a little bit more aggressive. And since I want less space between them, we'll do negative 1.75. I like it. I like it like that. But let me show you some adjustments you can do. First, we can add some interior hexagons. We'll do 40. And you might like it going from the yellow to the red, spinning the way it is. But if you do split elements, See the difference? Now the color's gonna twist with each individual hexagon and make it go in like that. I couldn't figure this out doing the old method on the old video. I never told you guys because I didn't think it was relevant, but if you were looking for that specific feature, it's the split elements, and that's how you do it. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you have any questions for future videos, let me know, and we'll see you next time.